Financial Times reports that U.S. money market funds and banks are stockpiling cash in the event that Congress fails to raise the debt ceiling. Funds are preparing in case market volatility spikes uh, as compared to the increase in redemptions. And they're simply worried of the impact that the debt downgrade could have on the short-term repo market. Joining us now is our guest host for the next hour. He's John Authors, head of the Lex column at the FT. John, great to see you. So you heard from S&P. Hmm. What do investors need to make of the ratings agencies when they say, and I'm a lady here, <laughs> darned if you do and darned if you don't. Well, I, it's a pretty I, tough conundrum. Well, I mean, obviously the rating agencies have very much more of a credibility problem than they did three or four years ago because they made a historic uh, bad call on U.S. structured credit. So far, their record on sovereign uh, credit is very much more respectable. They will, in rather wounded terms, point out that they uh, uh, started the process of downgrading peripheral European credit some years ago before it was particularly on the market radar. In terms of where we are now, I, I would still agree with everybody else that uh, uh, it, it has to be on balance unlikely that we actually get to a technical default. I still cannot quite believe that Congress would be that stupid. When it comes, however, to the question of whether there is a downgrade from AAA, I suspect Mr. Beers from S&P there was being somewhat diplomatic. I think the chances of a downgrade from AAA must be quite a bit more uh, than 50 percent at this point because even if we have if we have a short-term deal then that's plainly going to lead to a, a downgrade if we get one of these suggestions that we don't get a uh, that, we, that we have another vote in a matter of months um, but apart from that uh, any kind of measure that will require um, difficult austerity cuts or raising of taxes will in the short term be bad for economic activity and and be likely to uh, to prompt a downgrade of the uh, of the rating. So it seems to me quite likely, more than 50% likely, that we will get a downgrade. The thing is, uh, as we were talking about with uh, Asian currencies, where else is there to go? We, you've seen an effect on the foreign exchange market. Very few other markets have you, would you see any noticeable, visible symptoms of concern. It's uh, only in the foreign exchange where you absolutely have to go somewhere that you can really see any great worry so far about the debt ceiling. But you're not really seeing that. I mean, look at the yes. euro dollar. Look at the dollar Swiss franc. There's no panic selling there. Why oh, no, there's so much no investor come if you look at these major currency crosses? Uh, you've got the well. The, uh, in any in any uh, foreign exchange, you've got to go somewhere else. Um, sterling has gained um, something like three or four percent against the uh, the dollar in the last in the last few days, despite truly awful uh, economic figures coming out of the UK, for example. Similarly. Uh, the Eurozone uh, is subject to very great concern and very great risks and is still somehow or other managed to gain really quite sharply in the last week. Again, that's a sign of the, the US debt ceiling. If you take a look uh, at something like the Swiss franc or, as you were saying earlier, the, the Japanese yen, which is now almost as strong as it was in those perverse days after the, um, after the tsunami, uh, on those currency crosses, I think you do see some... Um, very real concern. If the, sure. if the word is panic, no, we, mm. we're, we're, well, all of us financial journalists have to be careful about using that word. No, there isn't any panic out there yet. Okay, John, hi, this is Christine. Let's go back hi. to the uh, ratings downgrade. If we do get that downgrade, mm. essentially to me that would mean interest costs would go up, it would be more expensive for the U.S. to service its debt. What are the repercussions mm. on the U.S. economy? The, oh, the repercussions are plainly negative. There's no point trying to, uh, trying to uh, sugarcoat that. The, the, the question is more exactly how much uh, rates would go up. We, the Lex column uh, has an analysis of this in this morning's, in this morning's paper. It's, it's just so difficult. At, at the moment, um, uh, bonds that are either Treasury bonds or ultimately guaranteed by the Treasury make up more than 50%. I think the number is 53% of the entire global stock of AAA rated credit. Uh, it's difficult to see where all of that money is going to go in a hurry. The, the number of places, the number of funds that are truly mandated that they cannot leave, cannot go anywhere other than AAA is smaller than you, you might think. I mean, it became very important during the structured yeah. credit era. Um, but uh, you know, plenty of U.S. money market yeah. funds, for example, can actually uh, can actually uh, are allowed to continue to hold U.S. Treasury yeah. 
double A rated paper. And, Sorry. And no, no, I'm, I'm just mm. thinking, and, and given that you're going to see haircuts on treasuries taken as collateral, mm. then does that mean that we're looking at the potential for a credit crunch? Oh, we're certainly looking at the potential for a credit crunch, and if, if we get a if we get a technical default, or if we get into this sort of really scary scenarios of uh, Tim Geithner working out what he's going to pay and what he doesn't pay, and one version, one possibility is that, that states go unpaid and then suddenly there's a default by a state or a municipality that nobody was thinking of. I, I, I mean, the, the risk if we actually have a default, even for a matter of days, of a Lehman-like, nobody knows which Treasury-backed collateral is good, so everything is treated as though it isn't good collateral and we get back into that same horrific state of affairs we had post-Lehman. That, that's a very real risk. It's just, it still seems, one hopes, unlikely that Congress would be that's stupid. Maybe I shouldn't be <laughs> saying that, um, but th that remains our, 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 our one hope, is that they can't really be that stupid, can they? Crazier things have happened, my friend. <laughs> John Arthur oh, yeah. sticks around for the entire hour, head of the Lex column at the FT. Any questions uh, for John? I think he will take them. Uh, he's a sport.